colossal team have raised the stakes. They've hit the world's gambling capital, Las Vegas, to pull off their most daring scams yet. On tonight's The Real Hustle Las Vegas. Watch out, there's three pickpockets about. The hustlers hit these tourists in the back pocket. Paul sharks this pool player out of his hard-earned cash. All you gotta do is practice that, you make a lot of money. Hi there, sorry to disturb you. And Alex finds a diamond in the rough and cons her into becoming an accomplice in a jewellery robbery. It's a robbery. Cash-rich tourists pour into Las Vegas every single day, hoping to make easy money, which is why the city is a magnet to the best con artists in the world. And so, in this series, Paul, Alex and Jess are facing their toughest challenge to date. They're hitting the most security-conscious city in the world to expose to our hidden cameras more notorious cons. All the people in this show have been hustled for real, and after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. There are all sorts of dodgy deals in Las Vegas, and if you know the right people, you can make some fast money. But if you know the wrong people, you can get taken for a ride. This is the twist. Vegas has a thriving black market in casino chips that have been acquired through dubious means. These chips are often sold on at less than face value to people who won't around suspicion when they cash them in. This situation opens up all kinds of opportunities for hustlers. Paul's waiting in this diner, which is a Vegas institution. It's the perfect meeting place for setting up a scam because of its close proximity to some of Vegas' biggest casinos. A contact of Paul's has arranged for him to meet a Mark who wants in on a money-making scheme. I'll be Joe. Hi. Good to Good see to you. Good to see you. Have a seat. This is my dad, Lena. How are you? Hi, Lena. Lena. How sweet. She's brought her dad along. You guys know the deal, right? You know, uh... I think I do. My brother passed, and I was talking to my dad about it, and he's like... Your brother passed? My brother passed. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Lots of people pass, you know? I come man. Oh. My brother, man. You're a conehead, bro. <laughs> the Marks have been told that Paul's part of a team that sells chips at discount rates to people unknown by casinos. Alex arrives to put the next stage of the scam into action. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit worried about it. Bit. Well, you shouldn't take people's word for it, that's, that's for sure. It's basically, uh, this is Alex. Hey, Alex. Hello. Hi, my name is Luna. I'm, uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Bobby Joe. Bobby Joe, nice, nice to meet to you. Meet you. Uh, how'd you go? Good. Cool. Uh, 400 from the Riviera. That it? Yeah. He's got $400 worth of chips from the nearby Riviera Casino. Okay. We're waiting for somebody right now who's coming from downtown. I told her to bring 3,000 back, but... She just called me. She, she's going to be here. Maybe. It's this $3,000 worth of chips that the contact had told her about, and she's come to buy. Bring 3,000 back, but... Yeah. Is she... Do you think uh, you can give her maybe a few chips to maybe go cash and I'll give you some money? Just... Hey, you know what? Sure. Why don't you take those? Take 400. Just, yeah, take the 400. Just... Yeah. He suggests a trial run. This is just what Alex and Paul hoped would happen. The convincer has been set. For 200. I wouldn't, I'd be very careful who you trust, but... Yeah. When it comes to get... money, you almost can't trust anybody. She's telling the wrong people. Yeah, we, we'll <laughs> give us 200 in cash. Just give me 200. So the $400 worth of chips will cost a mere 200. The Marks will double their money. No one's here, you're, you're, you're okay. There's nothing illegal about what you're doing. So. Okay, well, what, what they told us, they said it, it was just no, 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 I trust you guys. But... Paul checks the notes. You can't be too careful in this town. Why'd you make these ones? <laughs> How much are you wanting for the three times? Very good. It's looking good. 
the mark has her eye on the bigger prize. It's half, so it's 1500 Bang on cue, here's Jess with the $3,000 worth of chips. Why don't you go cash yeah. those and uh, we'll give you a call. She, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, she could I'm be. Here with you, guys. you can stay here if you want to. The dad wants to keep an eye on his $200 while she goes to make sure they're not being ripped off. Now let us. Yeah. How much? Okay. Why don't you go cash I'm that go in? Out. Just, uh, just, just so you know. More than 3000 Okay. And uh, where are you going now? MGM? All right. You'll be back quick. No stopping. We trust you, but don't stop anyone. Jess is apparently off to collect more chips. What? You guys don't mind sitting here with my dad? That's okay. My pleasure. I'll be right back, Dad. Back okay. Back. And the Mark heads off to the Riviera Casino for the test run. If she can cash the chips, she and her dad could be tempted to go for the bumper $3,000 deal, which is what the boys are really after. There she is. Hey. Can you scoot down? All, All right. good? Yeah, you Happy? Know, um... Nobody asked you She's anything. cashed the chips in successfully, making $200 in only five minutes, but decides to push her luck. Three for one. That's about what we pay to get them. She wants a three to one deal rather than the two to one that the boys are offering. Being perfectly honest with you, we can split these. 10 minutes after you walk out the door to the guys that are coming in next. We just want you to have them. I get you came all the way. Favor Trust me, it's a big thing. It's, it's up to you guys. Whilst the Marks weigh up their options, Paul gets the chips out to drive home the incredible double your money deal. That's what you're spending. That's your profit right there. So you don't get a deal like that anywhere else in Las Vegas. Let me see what you got there. Okay. Why don't you check that? Into the bank. The deal's done. Who said wisdom comes with age? Looks like you robbed the bank. Did you come? Yeah. All right, guys, I don't want to chase you, but we've got some more people coming in, so good to meet you. Good to meet you. All right, we're good here. Good to meet you. All right, guys. Good to meet you, Alex. Hey, take care. Be careful, yeah? All right, okay. Bye bye. Well, lucky horse you on there. They leave the diner and head back over to the Riviera. They've just swapped $1,500 for $3,000 worth of casino chips. So they think they're about to make a cool $1,500 profit. In actual fact, it's the hustlers that have made the $1,500. But how? Simple. The chips that they've just sold the marks are worthless bits of plastic. Convincing fakes that Paul and Alex have had made. With the marks getting suspicious, we sent our cameras in to find out if they still thought they had a good deal. All I know is I got ripped off, okay? Let's put it that way. I got ripped off. Here I am coming in, trying to make an extra dollar. And what is it? I goddamn lose the goddamn money. And now here's my daughter. She's out money, I'm out money. And how am I gonna get my goddamn money back when them guys are probably not even in there anymore? I'm telling where in the hell is my goddamn money? Because guess what? I've got an equalizer here. That's what I tell him. This scam has got all the elements of a classic. Firstly, you're asked to double your money, but also you're being asked to do it by methods that are a little bit illicit, a bit like money laundering, so you shouldn't really be doing it. But you've got two very good convincers. You get given the taste of doubling your money for a small amount, but it's very genuine. And then Jess walks in as if she's been delivering chips from person to person, taking them from casino to casino. And now they've got a big bait right in front of them. That all they need to do is bite. Now the psychology might be simple, but the scam is very effective. If you ever get offered an opportunity like this, then be aware that it could be illegal. So if something goes wrong, you've got nowhere to turn. Best thing to do, just walk away. Well, this scheme is just a new twist in a very old con game, which is trying to pass off bogus goods as genuine. It works very well because people aren't as familiar with casino chips as they are with real currency, so they're not going to be able to detect the fake as well. Um, also, people probably aren't going to go to the police because they believe they've gotten involved in some kind of scam involving gaming chips.
The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing, but of course the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. Alex is out for the night in a casino bar, but he doesn't intend to pay for any drinks. Okay. And this is what we're going to do. These here to the baseline. We're going to put this down like this. We trap this in between there so it can't move. He needs to get a match. Okay. There we go. Right, so this is the challenge. Okay. You've got to move that pint glass and stand it up okay. without the matchstick dropping. You can't touch the matchstick. Okay. And it can't drop. Okay. If you can do this, okay. I will buy you all drinks all night. All right? You better, this is difficult. If, you, I lose, I, I, if you, you lose, you're going to have to buy me drinks all night. And everybody else as well. Yeah. Right. You know. All right. What do you think? So she has to remove this middle glass without touching the match or letting it drop. I'll try. Well, okay, go on. Use your telekinesis. Yeah, I know. Mind right? power. <laughs> yeah. This is impossible. Uh, no. Uh, ah. <laughs> Pilot. The match. Wait, Shall you, I do you, it? Yes, please. Alright. Nice. So, we're going to take the pint glass out, stand it up next to the other ones, the matchstick's not going to drop. Oh, sweet. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> good one. <laughs> so Alex lights the match and the burning sulfur sticks to the glass. As long as the match is blown out, it will stay attached and not drop to the table. It's hard to use a match. I'll have the beer. Coming up later. Actually, can we try this one? I think that would suit her. Diamonds may be a girl's best friend, but a hustler isn't, as this unfortunate girl is about to discover. Yeah, what's going on here? Pickpockets are always coming up with new and clever ways to steal people's belongings. These are two very unusual and highly effective techniques. Welcome to the Las Vegas Lifts. In a 24-hour city like Vegas, the streets are always crowded. And where there are crowds, there's often pickpockets. As Las Vegas is in the middle of the desert, the chance of rain is practically zero. So why is Paul carrying that umbrella? He's waiting close to this pedestrian crossing, and as a crowd forms, he moves in. This guy sets off with his wallet safely in his pocket. But by the time he reaches the other side, he's lost it and all its contents. So what happened? As the crowd forms, Paul selects a mark, whose wallet is in the perfect place to be lifted. He gets into position just behind him, and as they cross, he lifts the wallet and drops it into his umbrella. The lift and ditch are that quick. Sensing that someone has got too close to him, the mark turns around. And this is why the umbrella is so effective. Even if the mark suspects Paul's stolen his wallet, he can see that Paul's empty-handed and can even ask to check Paul's pockets. The last place he would look is in the umbrella. A guy came and bumped right in my side and uh, said, uh, looked at me and said, excuse me, sorry, and kept walking right in front of me. Yeah, it seemed odd that he bumped into me kind of abruptly, clumsy. What was in my wallet were work cards, credit cards, uh, driver's license. While Paul is busy working the crossing, 
Alex is down the street looking for a mark of his own. The yellow ribbon hanging from this guy's back pocket has caught Alex's eye. Lucky for Alex, that ribbon comes with a wallet. What a bonus. But the ribbon and wallet combo isn't a new fashion statement. It's all down to Alex's accomplice, Jess. Let's see why. This store has a counter that's clearly visible from the street. Alex and Jess are waiting outside for a mark. They spot a guy who keeps his wallet in his back pocket, heading for the store. This schoolboy error has just made him the mark. Jess stands behind him while he pays, and just before he's finished, she holds the yellow ribbon over his pocket. When the wallet is replaced, it gets trapped in the ribbon. With the mark looking at some brochures, Alex moves in. He leans over to grab a leaflet while simultaneously pulling on the ribbon and the wallet pops straight out into his hand. The interesting thing about rat's tail and the umbrella drop is that they're two techniques that you won't see amateurs practicing. So the rat's tail, for example, overcomes the difficulty that pickpockets face of the mark feeling their hand going in and out of the pocket. Because you're only pulling on the ribbon, the mark never feels your hand going into the pocket. In fact, your hand never goes into their pocket. The umbrella gets rid of the other problem, which is once you've stolen something, where do you ditch it? So once you've successfully gone in, taken a wallet, the moment it drops into the umbrella, you're very clean, because even if the mark turns around, all you've got to do is hold your hands up, the umbrella's hanging on your hand, the wallet's in the umbrella, who's going to look in the umbrella? Back pocket's notoriously easy to get into, so you should always keep all your valuables in a front or zip pocket. In Vegas, people will bet on anything, so Paul has come to this bar looking for someone to hustle. This is the pool bet puzzle. <laughs> Paul's found himself a mark, and after shooting a few friendly games, he suggests playing for money. That hurts. The mark eagerly agrees. Good man. Is Paul about to be hustled? No chance. Paul sinks the nine ball straight from the break, which is an instant win. The mark's cash goes straight into Paul's pocket. All right, you want to, yeah? It's lucky, all right? It's a lucky break. You want to play a game or try something different? Uh, hey, up to you, man. Let's I'm try here, something so. different. Ever the fair sportsman, Paul offers the mark a chance to win his money back and lines up a trick shot. That's my position, yeah? The nine ball is there. One ball here, I gotta sink it in that pocket. Then I gotta sink the nine all in one shot without touching any of these balls. What do you think? So Paul reckons he can hit one shot with the cue ball, potting the yellow in the middle pocket, then the nine ball in the corner without hitting any of the other balls. You wanna do 100? Confident that Paul won't make this impossible looking shot, the mark slaps down $100, which Paul covers. This is as easy as peeling a banana. 100 to make the shot. All right. <laughs> All right, that was 100 bucks, right? Paul smacks the yellow into the center pocket with the cue ball, which then bounces off two cushions. He uses his cue as a guide for the white, so it rolls the length of the table and knocks the nine ball into the corner pocket. Paul takes his hundred dollars. So I'll give you a chance to win. Paul offers the mark one more chance to win some money back and sets up another challenge. I'll tell you what, I'm feeling bad for you. Make it for 20. <laughs> the guy tries to bet another hundred dollars, but in a rare moment of kindness, Paul only takes 20. Clap them together. Like that. The two has to start on top of the 20s. You have to pot the green, but you're not allowed to touch the blue. You're not allowed to touch any of the cushions, and you're not allowed to jump the ball so it can't leave the surface of the table. And that's it. How do you pot the six? 
So to win, Paul must use the cue ball to pop the green, but he can't jump or hit the blue, which is on the money, or bounce off a cushion. Well, there's 40 on there, I'll put another 40. Another 40 on top. Paul can't believe his luck. They say a fool and his money are easily parted, and this guy's just giving it away. He ups the bet by another $20. Ready? Ready. Extra because we got him both? Actually, double. <laughs> Pass that over here. So Paul rolls the notes up and clicks them together in a tube. He then balances the blue ball on top so it's touching the notes. The cue ball strikes the tube of notes, then follows through to pop the green. Miraculously, the blue ball follows the green into the pocket. Hey, good Congratulations. One. All you got to do is practice that, you make a lot of money. This scam takes a whole load of guts to pull off because jewellery stores don't really like it when you steal their stuff. This is the jewellery store steal. Alex is out cruising in a hot sports car. Not only is this motor going to be essential for making a quick getaway, he's hoping it will help him impress a not-so-lucky lady. Hubba hubba, these girls are just what he's after. Hi there, sorry to disturb you. Yes. Really sorry, I was wondering if I could ask you a favour. I'm trying to buy my wife a uh, fifth year anniversary gift. I was trying to buy her some jewellery, but you know, men, jewellery, it's always a big disaster. I was wondering, could I ask one of you to help me out? Just to try it on, let, let me know what you think. Yeah, I don't mind. Do you, you mind? Just, just to no, step mind. in with me and just try one on? Okay. Yeah, okay. do you mind? T two minutes. Okay. The silver-tongued fox. I just don't want to make a mistake and have to pay for it for the rest of my life. You know, there's a store just here. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Whilst her friend waits outside, Alex enters the jewelry store with his newfound squeeze. How are you? Great. Little does she know she's going to be aiding and abetting him in stealing a $5,000 necklace. The shopkeeper assumes that they're together and that he's treating her to a piece of jewellery. Yeah, special occasion, so we need to get something nice. So, um, well that's, how about, I, I quite like that one there, well this one's quite nice. Actually, can we try this one? I think that would suit her, because that's quite I classy. Like, yeah, it's nice. It's well, beautiful. Yeah, it's it's nice, I, I'd like, yeah. can we have a look at it? I just feel how heavy it is. It's, it's all right. I mean, it's quite. And these look like teardrops. Do you mind if she tries it on? Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Actually, do you, do you have any any mirrors in here? Nothing. And that's it. The first stage of the mission is accomplished. But how? Alex enters the store with a $20 necklace hidden in his left hand. Actually, can we try this one? He looks for the one that most resembles his cheap necklace and asks to inspect it. I just feel how heavy it is. It's, it's all right. With the $5,000 necklace in his possession, he asks for a mirror. Do you have any, any mirrors in here? This allows him to turn his back on the shopkeeper and his supposed partner and switch the $5,000 store necklace for the cheap one in his hand. Let's see that again. He transfers the store's necklace from his left hand to his right, and then lets the cheap necklace in his left hand drop into view. The store's necklace is now concealed in his right hand. I'm looking at the mirrors now. Now for stage two. With the cheap necklace round the girl's neck, he's only got a few seconds to get out before the shopkeeper notices the switch. Alex slips his right hand into his pocket 
simultaneously depositing the necklace and setting off his phone. Hello? 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 Sorry, it's my work. Hang on one second. Sorry. As the shopkeeper takes a closer look at the necklace on the girl, Alex steps outside to get a better signal. The shopkeeper immediately realizes that the necklace has been switched. Piper. It's a race against time. Alex needs to get out of there now. This is not the same necklace. Not the same necklace? Okay, let me go get the guy. Security? Please. Pedal to the metal, and he's off. Oh my god. I don't even know you. You don't even know me. The store owner and his security guard are too late. The only thing they can do now is call 911. I'm so scared. What's going on here? He's already gone. Already I don't gone. know you. I don't, I don't, I don't know you. I don't know you. I just want to take it out of the necklace, please. I'm so scared right now. Well, how oh. did you not know him? I don't know him I, because you're like, you know, I want to like, you know, waiting outside. But you came in together. I don't know what's going on here, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, so I don't even know who you're involved in a robbery. That's what's happening. It's a robbery. One of the key elements that makes this scam work is the dual reality of the relationship that I have with the lady that comes to help me in the store. She's just doing me a favor. However, what's very important is the people in the jewelry shop have to assume that we are together. Otherwise, they'd never let me walk out the store. Another key element, of course, is the moment of the switch. And that is nerve wracking because you've got cameras in there, you've got the shop assistant, and you also have the lady that was helping me out choosing the jewelry. Of course, any jeweler worth their salt will realize straight away. So you've got to get out. If you do work in a jewelry store, you should always keep a close eye on any items that you hand over to a customer. And if somebody does have to leave in a hurry, then take a second, just double check the item before you let them go. Whether enjoying a break in Vegas or anywhere else, don't forget you can't cheat an honest man. I got ripped off, okay? Let's put it that way. I got ripped off. And remember, if it sounds too good to be true... Do you mind if I step outside just with it? It probably is. For more information on the making of The Real Hustle Las Vegas, visit the BBC3 website. Up next here on BBC Three, another brand new drama from our brand new drama season. A good place to get it from. We head over to a West London housing estate next for W10 LDN.